You haven't seen the new one here. Oh, this is new. That's it. This is different. Yeah, this one's different. Have you been in this one? No, I was in the other one. Yeah, there you go. Oh, it looks nice. Now make yourself at home. Thank you. You like this one better? I like it better because it's uh, it's a bigger vehicle. Yeah. Or it's a bigger engine. So, therefore, it's better on the road. That old one was just boxy. Like, if you took that for more than, you know, 10 miles, yeah. you were sick of it already. That's good. You got the nice decal. Official for the yeah. tax write-off. Yeah, write it off yeah. Unless I can prove to the IRS. It's a write-off. Exactly. How's everything going? You know, living the dream. <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, no, everything's fine. That's um, good. Yeah, the Milwaukee show's going good. Good. Yeah, it seems um, to be going well. Yeah, I'm, I'm there half the time. Uh, DC sports is, are terrible. You know, as you all know. Yeah, it's rough. We're in a fucking low point right now. It's bad, man. Um, and then the commies. Yeah, the, the commanders. That's the nickname, at least for now. Oh, shit. How's your family there, young family man? Good. Uh, man, daughter, huh? daughter. Hey, Andy Poland is here. Hi, buddy. What's up, Come man? on in. What's up, Andy? How are you? How are we doing? You, Good. you Good. two have not seen the new no. trick. Nice. It's uh, a little different. Yeah. It's better for uh, longer range missions, so to speak. Yeah. Check, 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 check. Tell me if you're volume if your levels are okay in terms of your headphones oh yeah everything yeah. good guys be lower I yeah just, I you're just, on three goldie how about that uh lower 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 yeah, lower lower good. lower yeah. that's better right there yep i just finished succession this is like how logan roy rolls oh god <laughs> <laughs> so you're watching that show i watched the whole thing I watched oh you all, did all 29 episodes for you. see i i i don't think it's very good but i'm in the minority it's a very popular show and people love it here's why i don't care about it I don't care about any of the characters. Right. None of them hooked me in like I care what happens to them. Right. No, no, that's that's a fair point, that, yeah. they, that they're all hateable, every one of them. Right. But you're into it, so any other shows you're into, Andy? <sighs> what else did I watch? You're I not watch. a shows guy. Uh, well, I started to because, you know. It's winter. Yeah. And, and DC sports suck. Yeah, I mean, you know, I watch, I, and, and my schedule is, you know, I have pretty much afternoons, so there's right. no games on in the afternoons. Yeah. So I watch, uh, I've been watched that. I watched um, Yellow Jackets. You heard of that? I've heard of that, yeah. Yeah. Um, what else have I watched? Um, Galdi, are you a shows guy, or is it all sports? No, shows. Uh, Ozark. You watch yeah. Ozark? I heard I'm, that's great. I'm just trying to get into it. Yeah. O Ozark is is Breaking Bad-esque. Like well, that's the thing. I feel like it's a knockoff handbag. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's – I mean, <laughs> there are similarities. But you could argue Breaking Bad is a knockoff of Sopranos. Like, there are similarities between all these anti-hero yeah. shows. That is true. Where, like, a bad guy becomes the good guy and you root for the bad guy. You know, that kind of a thing. I guess with Ozark, I, I never bought into Jason Bateman's sudden – turn to the dark side yeah but if you watch how he is he's like uh he's a bad guy but he's like this very gentle benign bad guy you'll you'll, you'll see if no i know i'm halfway through the first season oh, okay. i get the vibe of it okay the thing with walter white though is it was a slow yeah turn one click at a time breaking bad i think is the all-time it's number one. the goat have not watched a single episode god oh, damn it Andy. what man, what is wrong man, with you I, I, well that's my You'd love it but but the problem is, is it's like when you stand at the foot of mount everest like <laughs> and if you get daunted by what yeah, you're looking at 29 episodes i thought eh, maybe i can do this how many episodes are we looking at oh it's like 50 or 60 yeah but so. but you'll you'll eat them up man like okay. you will not want right. to stop watching yeah right. once you get into it you'll be like all right i'm into yeah, it that's now. really gotta good. do that and you know what with no baseball coming, mm. you'll have plenty of time for Looks it. Let's way. talk, Galdi, <laughs> about the coming baseball apocalypse. Yes. On Saturday, it was a very, very bad day, yes, according to all the people who cover the sport, yeah. that the players made a comprehensive proposal in which they moved significantly off of a number of asks, and baseball said, well... We'll give you a million more <laughs> in the CBT threshold. Yes. And the players are like, okay, now we're fucking pissed. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I thought they would not miss regular season games. That clearly is very much in danger now. I think it's interesting, the coverage of this. I feel like the media is very pro-player. And I don't know if that's always really? the case. But at least from what I gather, like there's a lot of like pro-player sentiment out there. I think it's the kind of thing, though, I remember in 94, at least it seemed to be the case, there was a real appetite to, like, get into the issues and see, like, who's more right and right. who's more wrong. 
I don't get that sense this time. Baseball's I, in a very different place. I don't the, either. Do yeah. you, Andy? Like, you've covered lockouts 90, way back in the day. 1990, I was there every day. And I was there when they Where's settled, there? Uh, New York City. I was at the uh, Helmsley Hotel. As a matter of fact, the Leona Helmsley. Leona Helmsley. Helmsley. Who There's a, a blast from the 80s. Under investigation for tax evasion because she was using workers from the hotel to work on her mansion. <laughs> and and, uh, and Is that wrong? Should I not have done <laughs> that, Gold? <laughs> And so, you know, she sees all the television cameras set up because that's how it works. She's, you, you wait and you wait to see if they come out and there's right. a news conference. So she sees all the cameras and she thinks it's a chance for good publicity. So she's got Harry, who's like half out of it, you know. Hello, everybody. I'm Leona Helmsley, and here's my lovely husband, Harry. Harry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. So um, you're in New York. You're covering that. This is the 94? 90. 90. 90. Okay. And, and so here's, there was a, an owner of a small all market team who was readily available to anybody who wanted to talk to him and he was pushing hard for a salary cap and his name was alan bud sealing wow and i just think <laughs> we need economic uh, 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 reform exactly in order to be competitive yep <laughs> and, and and faye vincent was the commissioner right and so there was a period there where it looked like the players were going to fold and that's when Don Fear, and Don Fear, <laughs> he was not a friendly guy or a fun guy, but he knew how to negotiate. And he said, well, the hell with this. And he brought in Marvin Miller. And Marvin Miller walked in and said, you bastards, you know, do you know what we went through here? I thought Marvin Miller preceded Fear. Exactly. He did. But he was so out. He, oh, so he, he brought him back in. Yes, he was retired. Like, remember this asshole? Yeah. You want to deal with this asshole yeah. now? Because now we're serious. And he had like Dave Winfield who, who straddled that area. So he, you know, brought right. him with him. And they right. and they tightened up. And they said that they thought the players were going to fold and Faye Vincent talked the owners into caving. Wow. And that's when Sealy decided, okay, we're going to have a coup later on. And two years later, he knocked him out and took over. Yeah. Well, back to your point, Galdi, I do sense like you that there is no appetite. No. To dig into the their side, player's side, where's what's fair, how to hash it out. I don't sense that at all, and I'm wondering why that is. We already had a season that started in July. They've already showed the fan base. They've had a season since. Oh, I'm predicting that again. Yeah, I think it's going to be a race to save Fourth of July. You think so? Yeah. Well, I'm betting the over. Could be wrong. I mean, I hope I'm wrong. The reason the reason is that they've they've showed the public that they can have a season that's 60 games and everything is okay. Yeah, and I think also. Baseball is just in a very different place now versus 94. At least in the 90s, you could debate where baseball was in terms of, like, is it the number one sport in the country? Is it the NFL? Is it the NBA? You can't have that conversation now. It's the NFL, and there's everything else. Right. And mm-hmm. For baseball, to me, it's like it's out of sight, out of mind. I mean, right. every year, <laughs> one of the most depressing things for baseball is when there's a World Series game and there's a Sunday night football game. And the Sunday night football game demolishes the World Series game and the television right. ratings. And this happens every year. And I just think with baseball, it's like people, okay, you're not going to start the season on time? Okay, fine. Like, we'll do other things, you know? People are okay. I think baseball has got to be really careful with this stuff. And then I think with the economic stuff, I think that's a function of the time we're in. And I don't think people want to hear it anymore about economics. Right. And, you know, everyone's dealing with their own stuff with everything that's happened the last few years. So, you know, in terms of like, should service time before free agency be five years or six years or four years? I don't think people really are that into that. Like I they might have been. Before. I think also the players have a rightful claim in that the old system of you don't get paid shit till you're 27 and you're under control because you're not probably going to be major league ready until then has been changed because guys are now major league ready at 21, 22, 23. Better training, better coaching. State of the art. And teams are smarter. You know, the con is up. Teams aren't paying guys in their 30s these Albert Pujols-like contracts. And, you know, I think that's part of the the animus here because the the players, you know, the players love to cry collusion. And to me, it's not collusion. It's teams just have gotten smarter. And now that there's legitimate PED testing, guys aren't peaking (laughs) at age 38. So... 
guys aren't getting paid in free agency like they used to get paid, and so the players want to shorten the time until you get to free agency, which is understandable. But, you know, it's a negotiation. Like, it's not about what you – as you like to say, deserving ain't got nothing deserving. to do with it. I didn't say that. That was Clint Eastwood and Unforgiven. Well, same – same, same <laughs> Zabin and Eastwood. I put yes, on the same thank level. you. But it's, it's, it's whatever you can negotiate. Yeah, like, right. So when you say, like, what's fair to the players, whatever they can command in a negotiation is what's fair to the players. So we'll see who's got the stomach for this. We always see the NFL players cave. Baseball players obviously are richer. They have had guaranteed contracts forever. So I would think they have more of a stomach to miss games this year. You know what else they've got? They've got a player who's negotiating for them, Tony Clark. That's not Uh good. That's that's Gino. Why is that that bad? (laughs) You got to have Don Fear hated, didn't really like baseball that much. Really? Yeah, he was he was a he was a negotiator. Right. And, and Tony Clark is a right. Yeah. He's a former player. And and what happened in football? Gene Upshaw, former player. Yeah. They, they had a nice cozy relationship. You got to have somebody. You know, yeah. Feed- Tony Clark likes baseball. Rob Manfred, who knows what he likes, <laughs> but it ain't fucking baseball. <laughs> he doesn't even understand it. Yeah. So it's bad. Al Galdi podcast available wherever podcasts are sold. Yes, and they're sir. not even sold. Free to you to make it part of your podcast roca- rotation. And Andy can be heard on uh, the Sports Capital, AM 630, right Correct. here in D.C. from 10 a.m. to 1? 10 to noon. 10 to noon. Okay, yeah. very good. Maybe 1 at some point, but All we'll right. see. So uh, exit prediction on this. Uh, what happens? I think the first thing is they get to Monday, which is today, as you listen to this, and they say, well, the deadline, we can still get in a full 60, 162. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to bend the first hard deadline, and they're going to talk, talk, talk. But then they're going to start canceling games, and then I think they're going to dig in, and I think it's going to be a race to save the season, it is just the, like the pandemic year. The seven-inning doubleheader still in? Supposedly, they were going to do away with it. I think they should keep it permanently, but I think it's, wow. especially now with the, the likelihood of a shortened season, yeah. Uh, I think they should have it for 162, this year, that's the only way you're going to be able to do it, I yeah. think. Because you're probably going to knock out a month, at least. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's talk money in a different realm. Aaron Rodgers. Word this week leaked out that Rodgers may want $50 million a year on a three-year contract extension, which in a normal world for an MVP, two-time MVP, would not be unreasonable. However, choking in the playoffs, salary cap problems with the Packers, and his age, and some people are like, what is this guy thinking? Greg Jennings, of all people, who feasted from the bullet passes of one Aaron Rodgers and won a Super Bowl, once again came out and decided to um, make it known that Aaron is a bad guy. here, <laughs> Or at least a, a, a hypocrite. Here, here is uh, Greg Jennings, let me get the uh, audio up here, on Fox Sports 1. Come on. I know you're in there somewhere. We'll take this out in post-production. Uh, why is that not on there? Hold on a second. Of all the things I had perfectly set up, that's not it either. Anyway, okay. So there was there was uh, uh, there was air. Sorry, <laughs> take two. <laughs> so there was Greg Jemming, Jennings. Boys, uh, does he have a point? Aaron Rodgers, bad guy. Just that. He told Jennings, don't be that guy asking for more money. And now here's Aaron Rodgers maybe asking for more do money. Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Basically. What do you think? Uh, so, you know, Rodgers denied this to his guy, Pat McAfee. Of course. Yeah. So, I don't know who's right and who's wrong. I mean, Rodgers is a giant pain in the ass. I mean, that has become crystal clear. But he's so good. Mm-hmm. And to me, if you're the Packers and you think he can – be Brady-like and play well into right. his 40s, then I think you pay him whatever it takes. You know, most people say the cap in the NFL is going to go up to $300 million in the next Ooh. few years. So even at $50 million, that's not going to be that bad if the cap soars like everyone says. It's going to soar, and if Rodgers continues to be an MVP caliber quarterback. so Right, but they have already redone so many contracts. Yeah. It's a race to get under the cap just to keep them. It's one of those guys. Look, look at the Cincinnati Bengals. Drek. Joe Burrow, Super Bowl. Right. There, there's no – it used to be if you had, you know, Jordan or LeBron or somebody like that, you could win an NBA championship. That's what's happened in football. It's like four guys, five guys that you yeah. can win a championship with. Right? Yeah. So of the quarterback shuffle that may or may not be coming, mm-hmm. what's your best bold prediction? 
I, you know, there's a lot of noise being made in the off season, and what happens? They stay. Right. So they who, have. Yeah. So until who, the dam breaks and they all move. So who, I mean, the, it, right now it looks like the only one who's going to be cut free is Garoppolo, and he's think, a he's a second tier guy. I think Garoppolo, Wilson, and Rogers. No. Really? No. Oh, they're oh, all. No. Oh yeah. Really? Wilson, you think Wilson and Rogers change teams? Yes, sir. I think Wilson maybe. Maybe. Once the bullets start flying, look out. Oh, it's going to be, be wild. Great. Oh, it'll be great. Hashtag content, as we like to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Does, so you think more stay. Galdi, what do you think? More staying or more shuffling? Uh, I think there will be more shuffling, but I think Roger stays. I think uh, Deshaun Watson goes. I think, obviously, Garoppolo goes. And there's a lot of smoke with Wilson. Like, there's there's too much with Wilson to feel like there's nothing there. Stuff keeps coming up. He's acted in a way that suggests that he's flirting with leaving and he wouldn't mind leaving. So right. I very much could see Wilson being gone. But I think definitely at least Watson and Garoppolo get moved. Is, yeah. is it possible Wilson really isn't that good? Yes. I mean, he, he benefited from playing with the Legion of I Doom don't think defense. that. I think he is really good, but it's always possible. He's good, but is he that good? Is, Let's see him somewhere else. I, is he Mahomes good? I don't know. No, I, I think he's like top 10, but he's not top yeah, five. Exactly. So, so you move uh, heaven and earth there. for a 33-year-old guy who hasn't done much in the last three, four years? Who will the commies end up with? Uh, I mean, what, the commander, second, sorry. Second tier Hard guy. Hard time getting that name right. Yeah. Second, Come on, give me the name. It's, it, well, Galdi? I think it's going to be they're going to sign Mitchell Trubisky. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 <laughs> and try and sell that. Yep. Sad trombone ski as Charge calls him. And they're going to draft either Kenny Pickett or Malik Willis. Yeah. So I think that's going to be in the be, first round. Yeah. yeah. I agree okay. with that. I, I I agree with that and they'll try and sell it. So in other words, a retread and a reach. Yeah. A retread and a reach because yeah. they're saying oh, all these quarterbacks are reaches in the first round. Yeah. All of them. But Willis, Willis, I think is going to be the guy who shoots up going into the draft. He had this big senior bowl week that everybody loved. I think he's probably what you talking about Willis combine. Yeah, so like every year, right? There's a guy, a quarterback in the draft who uh, stocks. They, they float all the way up Liberty. January, February to March to April. Right. Liberty University and all the draft people say very raw. Yeah. so you can't play them this year. Okay. No, well, hey, he might team, start. Every team says that with a first-round quarterback. Yeah. And, and then they're in there. Inevitably, the guy plays. Okay, but, but uh, before you, you know it, they're in you there. you live with it. Even Peyton Manning, 28 interceptions. Yeah. you got to live with that. And I, and they're not – because the all indications, especially what Rivera says to the media, hey, if I draft the guy, you're going to be patient with yeah, me? Yeah, I wish you wouldn't oh, say that. I, well, God, I, I, that, I that, that, that is so cringy, well, isn't it? Well, but that's, that's because – Are you going to be patient with me? No. Hey, media, we're not your fucking boss. Yeah. Go talk to the five foot six inch, you know, mansion buyer. <laughs> Unless he's indirectly talking to Snyder when he says that. That's that's the only oh. that's the only thing I think about where I'm like, okay, maybe. But otherwise he should not care at all what See, people in the media say. Here's what I would say to, to Rivera if I had the balls and if I was on the beat. I would chuckle, I'd go, Ron, this is ending badly for you. <laughs> you know why I know this? It does for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> this team is the reverse car wash. I know you like Dan. Yeah. I know he's paying you a lot of money. You think you got something going? Trust me, it'll end badly. Yeah. You had two so don't worry. seasons. Yeah. yeah, don't don't worry about us in the media. <laughs> it, it's gonna crash yeah. and burn for you. We've seen the movie. <laughs> <laughs> we know what happens yeah. every single time. Um, the stadium sites. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> Dumfries, the Dumfries Commanders. Oh my God! I mean, when they, I, I think JP Finley put out a graphic with the flags yeah. and the map, yeah. and it was like, holy shit, they are so far down there. They really would be the Virginia Commanders at that point. Virginia. I, I, the the Dumfries thing reminded me of last April when we got the list of names the team was considering. They sent out those surveys to season ticket holders, and then some of the names were horrible, like Belters and Wayfarers right. and Armada. And it almost felt like those names got leaked on purpose so that the eventual Misdirection. name didn't seem so bad. Mm. And, and I wonder if, like, the, the goal here is Sterling, but they put out Dumfries so that when it ends up being Sterling, people are like, well, at least it's not Dumfries. Yeah, that could be it. The problem is the 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 Dulles site, which they call Sterling, which is near Dulles Airport. At least that's where some people go. Yeah, down in Dumfries, it's where people are, but nobody goes you there. Get there. You know what I mean? Ninety five's yeah. clogged all the time. Oh well, that's the other thing too. Is that ninety five on Sunday afternoons? The entire East Coast, Andy, as you know, 
D.C. market, Baltimore market, Philly market, New York market, floods up that main artery from places south where people have things to do. Mm. Beach homes and lake homes and visiting their Nana down there and wherever. And so you put a stadium. I mean, I can't imagine 4 o'clock Sunday afternoon traffic on 95 and fucking dumb for And no public transportation. I know that that doesn't no. mean anything to you. I know. No, it, it means it to me in terms of getting to the stadium. But but without the Metro, I mean, it's a, it's a joke. I mean, yeah. I guess that the silver line would go out to Dulles if that, if that happens. But yeah. It already does, by the way. They built that stupid what, choo-choo train so out there. Be, Nobody fucking uses it. Well, I mean, we're it's, a Zoom it, town now, anyway. No, so. but but it's been big for the Nats, and it's yeah. been big for the for the basketball and the yeah. hockey team. Big for the Nats when they shut it down at 11 p.m. during the playoffs. Well, that's another thing. You know, that's that's <laughs> what good is a, a subway well, if they right, close? And and Metro every 30 seconds is closing stations for repairs. Yeah. Oh it's, it's shit! So yeah. it's a disaster. Yeah. It anyway, so I think that if they were to build a stadium in Dumfries, it is the final nail. In the franchise's coffin, one after another after another. The name, Danny, the suckiness, that'll be terrible. Now, Mayor Bow 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 Bowser is you know yeah. pitching a good story. I don't think it's going to well, happen. Well, they, they're looking to build a complex that's federal land, and it's not zoned for commercial. So yeah. so what this big thing that the Patriots have that everybody in, in Jerry World, everybody wants to build one, it's not going to happen on that site. Yeah, D, yeah, the D.C. thing has always been problematic because of the land, because there are a lot of people in D.C. who don't want the stadium there. That's right. been like a big thing. And then for the longest time, a lot of D.C. politicians were anti the Redskins' name. Now, that issue obviously has been addressed, but sure. – D.C. has been nothing but a headache. Virginia, it's always been kind of easy with Virginia. You know, right. Dan, we got no history. Dan likes Yunkin. Virginia's always been very friendly with the team. Right. So it does very much feel like Virginia. Yeah. Well, I, all I know is this. you got to build it right, and it's got to be in the right spot. These idiots I see online that say, if they win, people will come. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't understand how it works now in sports. People come if it's a great experience and it's not a pain in the fucking ass. Yeah, that's got to be not too onerous. They'll watch from home if yeah. they win. They'll root from home if they're good. Although, they will not go if it's a bad experience, no matter if the team's 16-0. and 0. The, the TV ratings are like half of what they were, like not even when they were great, like they were just okay. That's the TV ratings. TV ratings, yeah. yeah attendance mean, is famously th- bad. Th- this, this, this franchise, which was unbreakable, has yeah. been broken by it's this It's not guy. good. Uh, did you see this McVeigh turning down Amazon? Yeah, mm. 100 million. How did we get to the point, Andy, where a Super Bowl winning coach would even think about going to the booth? Because he's got a Money. team. He's got a team that probably won't win next year. Right. He goes to the booth for a hundred million, and he sits and he waits until the perfect situation comes up, and then he comes back, and he's got the grace period where he can be a five hundred team for a couple of years, and it, it makes total sense. I I don't know why he doesn't take it. He's young. Wow. And and look, we've seen guys come back for meal forever. Comes sure. back, wins a Super Bowl. Uh, Joe Gibbs sat out, and relative to this franchise, was successful. You know, two playoff appearances in four years. Nobody else has done that. So I, I think it make, would have made total sense for him to take isn't the deal. An aff- isn't it an affront to the profession of coaching? Isn't it an insult? Gold, it used to be you go to the booth as a coach. It's like yeah. you're all you're an old washed up war horse. Go tell us some coaching stories on Sunday. It seems like the money has shot up. That the especially the Romo deal with CBS has changed the game to where announcers now and you know Aikman going to ESPN. Yeah. The money, million. the money is insane. And so they were going to pay McVay twenty million apparently. Yeah, which is a <laughs> lot more than most, if not all, NFL head, head coaches make. You, Double, right? You get yeah. What I mean, I think top guys ten. We think I, it's not like I don't they think don't we know, it. yeah. but it's but it's yeah, it's around yeah, okay. there. Okay, but the thing with McVay is he has a chance to be, if not the greatest coach ever, then among the greatest coaches ever. His first five seasons are amazing. What he has yes. accomplished, right? But and he, he's young enough to where who knows what he's going to be no. able to accomplish. But, and who no. says they're going to suck this no. year, Andy? Not going to suck, but he's probably not going to win again and win a Super Bowl. Okay. And, and here's here's something else. Coaching is not like it was with Don Shula. Go twenty five years. They, they, it's it's a grind, and it's it's a twenty four hour a day. You know, just just gear grinding thing. 
Take a couple of years off. There's nothing wrong he with could. that. that, that and he then, could. You got to recharge, and and then you come back. And he might do it two or three times. And and each time he does it, he'll be more and more. Look look at what happened with John Gruden. John Gruden sat and sat, and then boom, a hundred million dollars. Okay, I'll take that. That is true. You know. I guess that's the thing. Will Gruden get back in the game? No, he's buried. Oh, yeah, he's... done. Your boy. Your boy Art Bryles got back in the game. Yeah, as an assistant coach at Grambling. Uh, a little still. bit different. I know. And, and, and Doug Williams. Oi, Gavalt. Did, well, did he make a fool of himself? Because Doug's like, I don't like it. No, right? he's working for Dan Snyder. Oh. And, and he says, <laughs> he's, and he, and this he, guy shouldn't be, and, uh, yeah. And he says, I'm out in supporting Grambling? You know? Because why? Because they're not paying you anymore? Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, how about the fall of one Phil Mickelson? Lost all his sponsors, basically. KPMG. Uh, the other one, uh, Workday, is another one. Callaway put him on pause. And this tour event that he was hosting, the American Express in La Quinta, said, yeah, we're going to get out. He didn't do anything nearly as bad as some other tour players, but all of his corporate sponsors are running. Mm-hmm. What's the lesson in this? Just shut up. Thank you. That's a good one. Galdi, what's the lesson? Yeah, uh, understand that if you say the wrong thing and the right people hear you, then you're done. And Mm -hmm. it it doesn't matter whether you should be done or you're not done. You're done. Done. I I have a question, though, about Phil. So Phil is a big gambler, right? Oh, yeah. Could it be that he has financial problems? Oh, yeah. And that that's why he wants to do business with the Saudis because he needs some money? Yeah. Like, the greed that Mickelson is exhibiting is disgusting. How much is enough? But might be because he is mm-hmm. deep in gambling debts. He got into it with Billy Walters, the insider trading guy who yeah. owns the courses in Vegas, big gambling guy, because he was two mil down to him. Right. So Billy says, okay, I, pst, I got a stock tip. <laughs> Tyson Foods. Put in a million, you'll make a million, and then you can start paying me back. Well, Phil does it so ham-handedly, it attracts the attention of the feds, because Billy Walters had been insider trading for years, they said. So it causes the feds to go, what the fuck is this, Mickelson? And then they unravel the whole thing. And then when it came time, Mickelson said, I don't know nothing about nothing, and Billy Walters goes to jail. What a fucking friend he is, yeah. huh? Two mil down, he gives him a stock tip, fucks up the whole deal for him. And then when it comes to save his ass at trial, shuts up and says, I don't know anything. Mm-hmm. Dick. Yeah, he's a bad guy. That said, I think the lesson from this is never say the bad part out loud. <laughs> or no, never say the out loud. What, what is the phrase? Never say the quiet part uh, out loud. Mm-hmm. Because Mickelson's like, these guys are scary motherfuckers and they... They really hate gays, and they don't do this, don't do that. He, if he had just said, listen, this Saudi league is intriguing, but obviously I have concerns about the country's human rights issues, as are this case with other countries in the world, so I'm going to have to really evaluate it. And boom, that's yeah. it. Or, or That's you, all he had to say. Yeah. But he got cocky. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it, 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 for all of Dan Snyder's failings, he, he shuts up most of the time. Uh, he does. You know, and that, that, that may keep him... As an owner, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, there was a massive college hoops wipeout on Saturday Ooh. night. One, two, three, four, five, and six all go down. Yeah. I think we're headed towards a really fun tournament. Should be, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the question is, as you look at the tournament, is there any team that you say is, Head and shoulders? Yeah. Not, not a great Gonzaga, team. Gonzaga, theoretically, but, but man, St. Mary's, ha- well, St. Mary's handled them last and night. And they play, will probably play again in their tournament. And if right. St. Mary's wins again, you know. Now, here's something interesting, Galdi, is that I'm unaware of the latest analytics uh, things. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Gary Parrish for CBS said, Gonzaga's playing a road game versus a team ranked 18th at Torvik, 20th in the net, 21st at Ken Palm, 24th in BPI, <laughs> 24th in KPI, and 26th in Sagarin. Yeah. I've heard of net, Ken Palm, Sagarin, I have not heard of BPI, KPI, or fucking Torvik. What is Torvik? So I don't know. I don't know a lot about Torvik. I can't, I can't answer that. B- BPI <laughs> is Basketball Power Index. That's, okay. the, that's the ESPN thing. Like ESPN right. has its Football Power Index. ESPN is a Basketball Power okay. Index. So is that Lenardi? Is that his deal? Uh, no, I think it's the, like ESPN's analytics department. Uh, okay. They they put together these like formulas. Uh, uh, Torvik T rank. Customizable college basketball tempo-free stats. Oh, okay, mm. 
Maybe that's it. Maybe it's a tempo rating. Is that possible? Yeah, although Ken Palm adjusts for uh, has tempo mixed into things. So well, when I stump you, Galdi, the analytics guy. Yeah, Torvik. I there yeah. it is, Bart. Torvik. The guy's name is Bart Torvik. Nerd. <laughs> I'm sure he's gotten laid many times. Like they Come have on. 68 teams. Come on now. I mean, you know, I'm, I've been watching the uh, on the ACC network. They've done the ACC tournament, the history of it, where it goes back where if you didn't win the tournament, you didn't get into the NCAA right. and they only had 25 teams. Yeah. That was real pressure, and it, the tournament came great. Sixty-eight teams? Are you are you really going to really care about no. all these? You know, it's, it, it's tough now too. I think college basketball is at a stylistic low point. Yeah. Like I, I, really? I know I know the NBA's popularity has taken hits, but I think there are reasons beyond style for that. But the NBA, I think, is so much more fun to watch than college basketball. Really? I, the three-point shooting in college basketball is horrible. Awful. The, 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 jack them up, the, chase them. Yeah. The jack scoring, them up, chase them. Teams don't score like they do mm-hmm. in the NBA. It's right. not a fun product to watch. And, you know, the tournament's great, but increasingly college basketball is a one-month sport, and people kind of start paying attention yeah. now, and I don't think that's healthy. Less it's and less. Good. I mean, uh, uh, Izzo made this point. This was the first weekend last weekend without football. What happens? The uh, only thing everybody's talking about is the Juwan Howard incident. Yeah, you know, not, not a good thing. Yeah, it's all uh, said how are you going to sell your sport when you got a, you know, yeah. an uh, ugly thing like that? Meanwhile, USC beat Oregon on Saturday. They're twenty-five and four since the start of the twenty nineteen season. The only Power Six programs with more wins than SC, Baylor, and Kansas. Last week, Jayco dismissed Andy Enfield as a coach. When I asked him, well, who should Maryland get? And he's like, I don't know who's out there. Some guy like Andy Enfield. And I go, well, yeah. he's doing a pretty good job. So your thoughts on Maryland, your alma mater, Uh, Well, sad. It is incredibly sad. It's incredibly depressing. (laughs) I think, you know, the reasons that Mark Turgeon left have not been fully explored and should Mm -hmm. be. This is very bizarre what ended up happening with that. You've had an assistant coach get arrested for soliciting a prostitute this season. Not good. Acquitted. He was acquitted. Yeah, they dropped the charges, but Maryland is not welcoming him back, which suggests to me Maryland doesn't think there's a halo over And who was that, by the way? Bruce Shingler. Okay. Uh, you've had a major transfer acquisition in Kudus Wahab, who we all celebrated, who has been a real disappointment. And it's the worst season since 92-93, which is before the team got good with Gary and Joe Smith. So I think in terms of like expectations for who they get, I would take Andy Enfield in a heartbeat. I'd, yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I think you <laughs> no, really – you'd be lucky to get him. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I don't know what they're going to be able to get – the program is not in a good place. It's lost a lot of relevance. You know, I remember when I first started working with you guys on the sports reporters, the Redskins were the number one topic. Mm-hmm. You could argue Maryland basketball and even Maryland football with Freegen was the number two thing in this area. Right. And Maryland basketball has fallen so far in terms of, like, relevance and interest and this is a real low point here, what's happened this year. So the state And Georgetown the is working is on how many losses in a row now? 16. No, 17. 17 and 0 and 16, 0 and 16 in, in, in the conference. conference. And they're playing Connecticut Fucking today. Georgetown. Well, here, here's, here's the bigger. Georgetown. Here's yeah. the thing. Our guy, you know, Coach Thompson, spinning well, right now. This is the last in his, his grave. His Bless his heart. Because, you know, here's, what, here's the problem with, with Ewing. According to reports, he signed an extension after the tournament last year. So it may be an expensive buyout to get him out. What they did with Turgeon, really? Turgeon they, they gave him more money, but they lowered the buyout. And so it was $5 million to get rid of him. It may be more than that to get rid of Ewing. Yeah. And, and I, he may not even want to do it anymore. You know, huh. it, it hasn't worked out. And he hasn't been able to keep anybody there. No. Uh, and aside from one miracle run last year in the Big East tournament, he's got a, a bad losing record. Yeah, and, and the run, it was so interesting. The run was great. And then they got demolished by Colorado. And, yeah. and it made the run look like such a fluke. And now this season, obviously, has made the run look like even more of a fluke. It's tough with Patrick because he, for years, worked as an assistant in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Like, he put in the time. It's not like he was just gifted this job. But he's been on the job, I think, four or five years now. And aside from winning the Big East tournament last year, there's, like, nothing to show for what he's been yeah. able to do. You know he called to come by, by, by coming back? His friend Chris Mullen, who flamed out a couple of years earlier oh, than he God. did at St. John's. So, you know, he really has no – and his roadmap would be John Thompson from 
40 years ago. Now, I'm sure you don't coach college basketball players the way Thompson did in the 80s. I don't think so. And yeah. You don't get away with it. Not with the transfer portal and everything else that goes on. With yeah. it. No. All right, let's end on this. Uh, you guys are both homeowners. You know what homeowning involves, expenses for things. Galdi, you know who Rick Ross is, right? Yes, the boss. The boss, Rick Ross. Andy, he's a very famous rapper. A well, rapper, not right? a wrestler. Rapper. Rick Ross, rapper. Yes, he's a rapper. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's not- my age and my whiteness yeah. here. <laughs> Rick Ross wasn't having it on the on the estimate he got to remove some trees oh, on really? his property. Okay. Yes. Take a listen to Rick Ross on this. Morning, Glory. I'm up early this morning, and I just got my estimate. I got like 10 trees I want to cut down. They say them big trees, them big oak trees, Rose. I say, I don't care. I want them cut down, them, them, them fucking up this vibe right there. <laughs> Nigga told me $1,000 a tree. For 10 trees, that's 10000 Okay, I just told my homie, you go to Home Depot and you go get me the biggest motherfucking saw there is <laughs> with a big chain. And you crank that motherfucker up. I'm going to cut the trees down. Good luck. You heard me? <laughs> You're like, good luck. No. So, follow up. He actually goes and does it. All right, here he is outside. What about removing the trees? Ah, that's the thing. Yeah, grinding the stump, Rick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as as it usually is, boys, the gold is in the comments yes. section. The gold is what follows. People going, yeah. And do you know how nasty and brutal and labor-intensive it is to pick those trees oh, up, cut them up, it's horrible. chop them up, split them up? Because you got to cut the branches first. Oh, yeah. yes. Then you cut the tree. Also, the tree cutting is negotiable. I've, I've done that. Okay, but a 1,000 a tree is not bad. Well, yeah. I, 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 those trees, actually, what the one he was cutting didn't look that big. Like, I had a tree just about that size cut down in the back of my house. The price started at 800 It went down for 200 to, oh, so you got it taken down and removed for two hundred dollars? Yeah, the guy the guy pulls up in a truck. I didn't ask him to come. He pulls up. He sees a dead tree in the back. He oh. says eight hundred dollars to remove it. Prospecting? Yeah. No, I don't want to pay that. Okay, I, that's all right. That's all right. Not uh, he didn't want to leave, so he, he did it for two hundred bucks. My parents recently had a hundred foot plus tulip poplar Whew. taken down behind their house. What was that cost? With stump and to. Grass it over, seven grand. Yeah. Because uh, it took guys to go up there like sure. monkeys with yeah. ropes and shit Falls and in. chainsaws to take off huge chunks yeah. of it. And it was so close to the house, only about 12 steps. Yeah. One wrong move. Right. And your house is cut in half. It's really expensive. But, I mean, this is Rick Ross. Rick Ross yes! is worth how many millions of dollars? I mean, what does he care? He probably spent 10 grand at the strip club last night. Like, what does he care about? <laughs> no. But, hey, nobody's going to fuck with Rick Ross on a price. That's true. Yeah, That's so true. now he's got 10 trees yeah. that he cut down or is sitting laying on his property. And he's going to have to pay a lot more money to come get them cut up yeah. and hauled off. I got a tree story. Yeah, let's hear it. I know he's a trainer, uh, and he lives in Frederick. Uh, Jim is in Rockville. He leaves his house, and there had been an ice storm, and a tree fell down in his neighborhood, and he couldn't get out of the neighborhood. So he goes back home, and he sits down and reads a book in his living room, and his wife says, well, you know, you don't have to work today. Why don't you come back to bed? I will in a minute. No, come on. Oh, okay. He goes back to bed. He's in bed 10 minutes, and right where he was sitting, this massive tree fell into the house and smashed up the whole area and everything. Yeah, and the insurance covered all of it, but he had to move out for a while. Yeah. And he would have been dead if he continued to sit in that that seat. And the funny thing is when you buy a house, especially in a new neighborhood, and there's no trees, you covet trees, and you buy the little saplings, and Mm -hmm. you look out the window, go out and go, I want it to grow, grow, grow. And then once you're in a house with a lot of big trees, you're like, fuck, ice storm. Going to bring branches down. Mm-hmm. Uh, the roots are not c- allowing me to grow the grass yeah. underneath. It becomes a pain in the ass. Weeping willow. You know what a weeping willow's like? They have, they have roots like uh, oh. like a tulip. They're you know? bad. Yeah. And they're messy as shit. Yeah, and they, but they, they look gonna... great when they're blowing right. but once, in the wind. Once Beautiful. they come down, it's a disaster. <laughs> All right, what do you guys got planned for the rest of your Sunday? 
Thank you for coming out this morning. I'd buy you some bagels, but Bagel City is obviously defunct oh, as it has been for a long time. Isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Any big plans? Uh, yeah, I'll be watching the Maryland game and uh, reveling okay. in the 20 year anniversary of the championship team. They're going to celebrate. Oh, they it. are. Okay, yeah. great. It's it's horrible. Galdi? That that team is being honored with this season is just it's bad. incredible. Yeah. But yeah, watch Maryland. Might watch some Georgetown and work on the next episode of the Al Galdi podcast, which oh, yeah. drops every how many days a week? Well, uh, Monday through Friday. Every Monday through Friday. Out in the 5 a.m. hour. Are you I still love up it. at 1? Yes. Man. Yes. But I do, I, I do it from home, so it's nice. I understand. Just go, go to my basement. You're up at 1 a.m. to do that podcast? Yeah. It's a and pump. you got Why? kids, Get too. Get up by 5 a.m. How do you yeah. sleep during the day? Naps? Uh, yeah. My mom watches the kids for like a chunk of the day, so okay. I'm able to sleep then. Mm-hmm. Well, I was going to wrap this podcast up. I now I need to put in the overtime here. <laughs> you wake up at 1 to do your podcast. Yeah. You're a savage. Hey, man. He's the best. Hey, you, podcast, come on. You lift, bro. Come on. Every uh, every day. You every, lifted today, hey, didn't you? That's right. Was today leg day, today Sunday? Shoulder, shoulder. Shoulder day. Okay. We try to ease into Sunday. All right, so. buddy. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Thanks for see coming you. out. Thank you. Hi, right, boys. All right, that awesome. Was fun. That was fun. Yep, thank you. Got hot in here. I tried to.